The Whitworth Park exhibition will open in May 2014 and will run until October 2014. We're in the initial stages of preparing the exhibition now, we're, we're, we're planning it, working very closely with archaeologists from the Department of Archaeology at the University of Manchester, the Friends of Whitworth Park and other interested uh, parties. And the content of that exhibition which is, is still taking shape I think is is becoming clearer to us as we have our preparatory meetings. The exhibition will make use of a very wide range of material including ordnance survey plans and maps showing the park as it was intended during its Victorian and Edwardian heyday. Also things like committee minutes which may not sound terribly exciting but when, when you delve into them as uh, Ruth Colton has done, turn out to be absolutely fascinating sources of information about the rules and regulations governing behaviour in the park and uh, as we all know or as the excavations have shown this, these rules and regulations have actually been uh, undermined shall we say or subverted by, by people uh, over very many years, pe people who completely disregarded these rules and regulations so they've indulged in uh, shall we say um, secret drinking uh, sessions in the park and uh, cl climbing up on the, on the statues and uh, tying uh, bits of clothing to the statues and so on, which, which is very interesting because there's, there's a kind of an official, the official side of the park, but there's also the, the park as it was experienced, as it was perceived by local people. And I think that's, that's, that's a really interesting thing for us, particularly from the point of view of community archaeology, because this is, this is a project that is intended to reach out to, to people in the Rush Home area, the communities that traditionally have used Whitworth Park over very many years. One of the things that comes out of research on, on the park is that, and the community in the area, one of the things that comes out very strongly is that this has always been a, a, a very strongly uh, immigrant community. The, the community profile has changed over many years from Irish immigrants during the 19th century to Afro-Caribbean immigrants in the 1950s, 1960s. And, and so that makes it a very multicultural area. The communities that live around the park have tended to be less well off. They, they've been culturally, socially disadvantaged in various ways and they've tended to use the park as, as a focal point for their social activities. And I think it's very interesting that this as a, as a community archaeology project is, is recognising the role of the park from its uh, official uh, face, the, the Victorian Edwardian face that was presented, to something that's actually reflecting or more, more reflected of real people's needs, real communities' needs. And I think that's a very important thing for us to do as archaeologists and I, I'm really interested in the, the role of community archaeology to, to reach out to communities like this to reflect their needs and interests and to present them to a wider audience. And of course for us as a museum it's extremely important that we, we are seen to play this role. The Manchester Museum is a university museum. We, we exist on the campus along with many departments that deal with archaeology and, and cognate disciplines and so we, we, over a number of years now, have presented ourselves as, as a potential shop window for people doing research work in the wider university. And that, that recently saw a, a very successful flowering, shall we say, with the Coma Land exhibition. And the, the content there came from Professor Tim Insoll's very exciting work in, in Ghana, in West Africa working with colleagues from the University of Ghana and the Ghanaian Museums and Monuments Board. And because of that, we were able to borrow a, a selection of these very intriguing, very, very beautiful uh, terracotta pieces that we currently have on display in our third floor temporary exhibition gallery. And the Whitworth Park similarly, I think, draws on expertise that's come from the Department of Archaeology people like Professor Charles Jones, Dr. Melinda Giles, uh, 
Dr. Hannah Cole, Dr. Ruth Colton and so on. And the exhibition, again in our third floor temporary exhibition gallery, is an opportunity to reflect their very hard work and research but also the, the work of students at the university and because that involves the community I think there's a very real sense in which this is this, this, is, this is meaningful work, this is meaningful research, it's not simply academic uh, research, it's not simply theoretical work for the sake of it, it, it it's work that has a direct impact on the community because it, it, it realises their hopes and aspirations, their, their desire for recognition as a community group within Manchester and I think too it, it, it's helping to put Whitworth Park back on the map so to speak and of course it's not it's not simply their work alone I, I think part of the, the impetus for doing this work has also come from the fact that the the Whitworth Art Gallery, which is one of the University of Manchester's cultural assets, along with the Manchester Museum, um, that that redevelopment has provided an impetus to reintegrate the art gallery with the park in a way that I, I'm sure was intended in the late 19th century, when the Whitworth Art Gallery was was first started, so first set up, and it was intended to be very closely integrated with the park and I, I think probably for reasons of funding that that approach really only lasted a few years and I think early in the 20th century the, the, the running of the park was transferred over to the, the Manchester Corporation and of course with local authority cutbacks and so on, the age of austerity which we're now all familiar with, the, the, the amount of money for maintenance of the park became less and less as the years went by, so that by the 1960s, 1970s, a lot of the, the, the key features of the park that, that would have continued to attract people would have been used by the surrounding communities. Those, those features actually became run down, they became un unattractive. In some cases, they, they were allowed to fold or, or, or indeed they, they were taken away. They, they were demolished or, or they were infilled. For instance, the boating lake that, that became the paddling pool that eventually was, was filled in. That, that has disappeared as a feature in the park uh, today. But we can see it on postcards, we can see it on plans, we can see it on contemporary photographs. And I think it's really exciting that archaeologists working with people from the community, volunteers and students from this university, have rediscovered that that boating lake, that, that paddling pool, complete with the, the very toys that children were playing with and accidentally dropped in the boating lake and, and lost. And they were there waiting to be recovered by the Whitworth Park Community Archaeology Project. And, and I think that's, that, that's really exciting because it, although the finds in themselves are, shall we say, uh, rather modest, they date from the late 19th and early 20th centuries, they are terribly meaningful, they, they engage people in, in a very real way because these, these are things that ordinary people can identify with. It's not that long ago the objects are within living memory and I think that gives this project enormous potential relevance to people out there, not, not just the people of the park but the people of, of Manchester as a whole. And I think it's really exciting that the museum, by offering itself as a kind of shop window for research and, and work carried out by colleagues on the campus, I think that that's a really exciting thing for us to do. It, it, it gives us a role uh, working in a in a very very positive way and a symbiotic way with with departments across the campus. It gives the museum this this tremendous um, potential outreach and that's got to be a good thing not only for us for, for generating for stimulating and encouraging museum visits it's got to be good for the archaeologists too who obviously are, are judged or, or on account of the the social impact of the research work the practical work that they do in archaeology